Welcome to Golf Smarter Mulligans, your second chance to gain insight and advice from the best instructors featured on the Golf Smarter podcast. Great golf instruction never gets old. Our interview library features hundreds of hours of game improvement conversations like this that are no longer available in any podcast app. A lot of the time that I spend with students that come see me in Arizona at Greyhawk, I have them learn to hit a variety of shots with their sand wedge. And that could be their 54, that could be their 56, 60. In doing that, I, I never want to come across as someone who says, hey, don't chip with your eight. That's not my point. My point is, can you gain skill so that with a sand wedge, you're the one in controlling the trajectory? Because I think if you went to a tour event, you could see a player take a 60 degree and hit a low runner or hit a high flop. When I'm teaching my students, I want them to acquire skills. I think that happens when you try a variety of shots with one club. With another interview from the archives of Golf Smarter, here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome back to the Golf Smarter podcast, Dan. It's great to be with you again, Fred. Congratulations on the new book, The Art of the Swing, short game swing sequencing secrets that will improve your total game in 30 days. Um, let's, before we get deep into this book, give me, uh, give everyone a rundown on your other, your other two books. Well, actually, this was the fourth, which oh, is I'm sorry. shocking to me as well as probably my, <laughs> my buddies back in high school. Uh, but I had The Art of Putting, The Art of of the short game and the art of scoring. And this was the fourth book. And, uh, you know, all of them have a, a heavy focus on short game. Uh, this one was probably the one most exciting for me to, to do because it, in a way, it's kind of defined me as a teacher. How so? I, I think, you know, now that I've been teaching pretty heavily for about 10 years, to, you know, the paying customers versus just me giving my buddies lessons on tour and my friends lessons at the club. Uh, I see myself as someone who helps people with not only what we might refer to as fundamentals or what I call the form issues of the swing, which grip, posture, setup, balance, you know, things that are simple and right in front of you, but the, the essence of this book is the second part of what I think I've become good at as a teacher is seeing the sequence of motion. And this book helps people kind of really ask, ask better questions. You know, one is, have you ever asked the golf ball what happened? Uh, <laughs> because cause if, if I, I, in my, my view in life, the guy who asks the best questions wins. You know, it doesn't matter what genre he's in, if he's in business or sports. If if a player can ask his ball, why did you go to the right? And, you know, some of the reasons might be, okay, the grip came through way ahead of the club head, and that had the face open. Well, if if the player never asked those questions and he never dawned on him that that was the why he hit it to the right, how's he going to fix it? And this book has several simple concepts along those lines, but a lot of my students that come, I, I don't necessarily have to overhaul their swing. What I help them do is understand why does the swing they have now hit some good shots and bad shots and have them understand properly the difference in what they do, and then that helps them self-correct. Hmm. The, the last time you were on the show it was just after The Art of Scoring came out, if I remember properly. Um, and loved that concept and really understood the idea of art of putting to the art of short game to art of scoring. So why now go, it seems like going back to the swing is, is, is that a, is that the proper direction of the flow of all of these? Honestly, uh, I would say the title simply is a different title. Uh, this book is heavy in short game. And the subtitle kind of covers that. Okay. Uh, I do talk about the golf swing some in this book, but it's not all golf swing. It's it's how you take concepts of sequencing your swing, whether it's putting, chipping, you know, hitting a bunker shot, how, how you learn from those things and apply it to your full swing. Okay. That makes sense because, you know, it, reading through it, it was like 
it, it seemed more of a, a short game book than it did a swing book. And 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 it is using short game ideas to help your full swing. Right. Right. Okay. A lot of photographs in here, which is really helpful. But you also have it seems to um the boy from Missouri. Uh <laughs> broken Thank you. Bo- broken ground that I um I'm really excited about being a tech geek, and that is the interactive nature of this book. The certainly uh you know, a new feature out in the world we live in is is a Microsoft Tag Reader technology. And, you know, I first learned this, you know, opening up my Golf Digest and saying, wow, what's that little barcode box down at the bottom of the article? And uh, my friend Matt Rudy, who, who writes these books for me, is a Golf Digest writer. And we talk through the concept. And, and basically what happens is if you have a smartphone – uh, and you download the the tag reader app uh, it doesn't matter whether it's my book or a magazine you know or golf digest i'm seeing these these barcodes everywhere in the magazines now when you take a picture of the barcode with your smartphone it immediately sends your phone to youtube and you can see a video well one thing i i've almost done no videos uh in the course of my time teaching and in this book, I've embedded 25 videos that just come along with the book. And so the person can uh, take a picture of the barcode in the book, the, the little tag, and it will go to YouTube. And you can watch me demonstrate and talk through what it is you're reading in the book. And the response from the per- people who've gotten the book already is tremendous. They're loving the idea that they have both – you know, visual with the pictures, they can read it, and they can see the video. It's an amazing combination and a, a phenomenal use of technology. I have an Android phone, and as soon as I saw the URL on here, which is get tag G-E-T-T-A-G dot M-O-B-I, it's a Microsoft product, but it's a free download. And as soon as I saw it, I went right to it. I know I've got to believe it also works on um, other Systems beyond the uh, Apple system and the Android system. Does um, BlackBerry? I, I'm, BlackBerry I works fine. Oh, really? Fabulous. Absolutely. Okay. So, so um, yeah, I downloaded it immediately, and I was flipping through the book, and I came across one, and I held my my Android phone up to it, and bang, a beautiful video popped right up on the screen, and just kind of uh, embellished that entire chapter. It was amazing. It, it was it was also you know a new venture. It was fun for me to do the the the, the video turned out nice. We were uh, we had a perfect day in Carlsbad. I shot the videos on the back of the range at at TPI out in California, and uh, I, I was proud of how they got edited out and uh, how they look. And they're short; they're a minute, minute and a half at mm-hmm. the most, mm-hmm. uh, so they get to the point. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's been fun too. I have a. Uh, an iPad. So when I bought the book in iBooks, you know, you can read along and all you got to do is push your screen and it goes to the video, which that's really cool. Is it also available on Amazon? So is it a Kindle you know, app the, as well? The, the, kin- the Kindle is, uh, it's there as well. I'm, they're, they're still tweaking the ULRs on the Kindle. URL. Yeah. Obviously, obviously the Kindles don't play video. Right. But, but people have, the Kindle app on their iPad, and we're trying to make that really smooth, but uh, that'll be handled shortly. Yeah, I should try that because I have the Kindle app on both my Android phone and my iPad too, um, and uh, use it as well as my Kindle. <laughs> yeah, I told you I'm a geek, um, and so I haven't tried that yet. And it, but, it's it's all a learning curve for me as well. You know, I didn't know how I was going to answer questions pertaining to the app. One of the things that uh, is really a cool feature is I know with my iPhone, the history button on the YouTube uh, channel on my phone saves the ones I've opened. Mm. So you could actually go to the course, uh, have the video saved on your phone, not even have to take the book and, you know, be in the bunker and say, what exactly am I working on here? Mm-hmm. Pull, pull the little one minute video up and you got it. 
Now, I'm, I'm not sure if it actually saves the video or just saves the URL. So if you're on yeah, it lets you, it lets you go back to right YouTube. exactly. So if you're on a plane and you don't have Wi-Fi, um, you may right, not be able to go ahead and pull that right. video back up. Yeah, so, I won't pull up that way. Yeah, but your history sh- saves the URL to different videos. Now, I have a Golf Smarter TV channel, so I do production, some video production of uh, various golf pieces, instruction, travel, things like that, and. I'm curious to know, I mean, I know what it takes to produce a video. Yours looked phenomenal. How big was the crew that you had to shoot? Uh, one. You had one cameraman? Yeah. Wow. And what about, and, and a sound guy? Uh, no. Uh, producer? Well, we'll call Matt the producer. Uh, okay. The, the, the guy you Matt. worked, who... Yeah, who who uh, Matt Rudy, the one who Matt was, who, Matt, who, Matt Rudy was he was the producer. Okay, wow. Okay, and I'm going to ask it again. Did, would, did the publisher pay for the production of these videos? Uh, no, I, I I own the videos. Okay, so a a friend named Ryan Knoll uh-huh. who uh, he shot the videos, mm-hmm. and then you know the pictures. I've used the same photographer for all my books. JD Cuban uh, shot the pictures, and I and I and I say one person. I had one person on video. I I brought one of my very best friends named Tom Kalinowski from Scottsdale, and you know he was kind of the eyes and ears of hey that didn't sound right or you need to do it again or hey that was perfect. And he's a buddy of mine that's a a great player in his own right, and he's watched me teach, hung out a lot. So it, it was a little bit of a team, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a whole bunch of cameras. We shot it all with one camera. Well, you did a great job. Uh, they look beautiful, and I just love the way you've integrated um, the uh, the videos into the book. Well, I appreciate it. It's it's fun to talk about. Now that we've discussed the uh, elements of the interactive elements of the book and, and the basis of the book, let's get into it. Let's talk about the book and what you're covering. Um, I was fascinated and would love for you to go into some depth, because we have some time, about your concept of one club and five swings. Well, a lot of the time that I spend with students that come see me in Arizona at Greyhawk, uh, I have them learn to hit a variety of shots with their sand wedge. And and that could be their 54, that could be their 56, 60, you know, they get to pick. And in doing that, I, I never want to come across as as someone who says, hey, don't chip with your eight. That's not my point. My point is, can you gain skill so that with a sand wedge, you're the one in controlling the trajectory? Because I think if you if you went to a tour event, you could see... Uh, a player take a 60 degree and hit a low runner or hit a high flop. Well, how, how does he do that? And when I'm teaching my students, I want them to uh, acquire skills. And I think that happens when you try a variety of shots with one club. I'm I'm still listening. I want you to to really go into um, what what five shots are you talking about? How do you do that with one club? Because I mean, I carry four wedges with me. Well, and one I'm going to have to remember the five shots in the book. You're, you're, <laughs> you're stretching my memory here. I told you I didn't read books very much. Not even your own. You just dictated to somebody else. Hey, you know what? We we come up with some good <laughs> good right. shots. But but I'll prompt but, you. Let but, me prompt but, you. But, First but, one. But, Easy. I, the shot that I like to hit around the green when it's accessible is I'm going to hit a low chip and run. That's the first one you hit. It's it's a very simple shot as far as how the ball reacts, the predictability. So how how am I going to control the face so that I know the ball comes off low? Well, well, one, I seldom ever put the ball back in my stance. My and my teacher, Mr. Lanning, who was my mentor growing up, he said, play the ball in the middle or slightly forward, even when you're hitting lofted clubs, really? because the when you play it forward, you put less backspin on it. And so when I chip and pitch, I'm not looking for a lot of backspin. Now, you, you, you can't hit a shot with no backspin. 
It's always going to have some. But when I have less backspin, the first bounce becomes more predictable. Mm. And so when I can, when my guesses start getting better and I have the skill to hit the shot that I guessed I wanted to hit, I, I start hitting chips that look like putts. And so with the ball kind of middle, I take the club a little bit in and hooded. And when I come into impact, I have a, a, a small kind of smooth pivot with my lower body and I deal off the face with the back of my left wrist. So if the back of my left wrist turns down a little bit, I'm taking loft off the face versus if I hit a, if I hit a bunker shot, I would want cup in my left wrist. So that's, that's me controlling the loft. Uh, one, I, I, I try to swing the handle as little as possible. So the grip end doesn't really swing back and drive through the ball. My pivot helps the club head come around, and the back of my left wrist really controls the loft. And, you know, those are – it's tough to talk through that right, uh, with, just, with just words. But – the concept is, okay, I want to be in control. How do I hit a chip with the same club, the same distance, and one goes two feet in the air and the next one goes six feet in the air? Well, that's why tour players get up and down because they know how to control the trajectory. And in the, and in the end of the equation, you don't want to have to think about it. But when my student comes and, you know, he's, he's hitting, you know, thin ones and fat ones, he's not even making great contact. When he can move from good contact to control and trajectory, now he's acquired skill. It it surprises me um, how many players, even uh, lower handicap players, but most of the time I'll see high handicap or less experienced players who their, um, their course management uh, is more of, I'm going to hit it hard every time I have the chance. That even when they get around the green, they don't know the value or the difference of a low uh, chip and run like this, you know, of like, should I just kind of, you know, loft it up or try to run it across? Please um, explain what's the best time uh, in what uh, instance you would use the low chip and run shot that you're talking about. Well, I I, I want to get away from... You know, I have to do this or I have to okay. do that when I'm chipping. You know, I don't have any hard and fast rules of I've got to land it on the green as soon as possible. You know, I see the shot in my head and when when I can, I would say I pick a lower trajectory, but not always. You know, I want to pitch the ball where it's most predictable to get it close. And if there's – sometimes I may have a shot where I have 70 feet to the to the hole, mm -hmm. but there's a little hump or bump out there in the middle. Well, instead of me hitting it right on the front of the green and rolling it over the hump, you know, I may calculate that my best odds of getting it close is to pitch it over the hump, take out that equation or that piece of the chip so I don't have to factor that what's the hump going to do to me, pitch it over it and roll it up. So – Every situation is is different, right. uh, but I still personally hit most of my chip shots with my fifty eight. Mm -hmm. But I control the trajectory, and and once again, you know, the player that's you know he's keeping his score. He needs to do what he's best at. So if if you're best at hitting an eight iron, if you're best at rolling a hybrid, when it comes time to shoot a score. That's what you need to do, but it's okay when you have time to practice to learn other shots. I say, you know, you put more arrows in the quiver and, and you have more things to draw draw from for different situations when you practice some of the ideas in this book. Um, and I think that I rarely see, and I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, um, going out to the driving range and practicing different shots with one club. I mean, I'll pick a target on the driving range and say, okay, that, that target is my six iron. And I'll just hit my six iron to that. And then when I pick a different target, I won't try that with my six iron on uh, different ways. It's, it's interesting that, uh, particularly with young players, uh, some of the most fun lessons is when you go out and you 
uh, you know, you play games. I know my friend Tom Kalinowski that I spoke of, he taught me a game that he learned from Tom Lehman. Uh, so you pick the flag out there, and you have to make the ball curve right to left, and the winner is the person who whose ball hits closest to the flag but doesn't cross over to the left. Whoa. You know, so <laughs> you, you work on working the ball, but you don't miss it on the wrong side. Uh, so to take a young player, I, I, I know I had a blast with uh, a friend of mine named Eric from Washington, and his mom was watching, and, and she was like, well, no one's ever showed him how to hit low hooks and high slices, and we just were out there being creative, and he was having fun. Uh, you know, the fun part for me came when I challenged him to see who could hit a sand wedge the farthest, and, you know, he, he hits it 300, and I hit it 256, like I always Wait, did. Wait, that's a driver, not so, with a sand yeah, wedge. Yeah, <laughs> so, 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 so our, our distance is, is wildly different. So he's, he's pumped. He's going to beat me in who can hit a wedge the farthest, except I didn't tell him I was going to blade mine. <laughs> you know, so I hit my sand wedge 130, you know, well, but he said, well, you didn't say you could do that. I didn't say you couldn't do that. I was creative. And so it's good for kids versus what you're saying is just pick a target and hit a six iron all day. You it know, sounds learn, like a scene learn, out of Tin Cup, doesn't learn it? Learn some shots. Yeah. Um, but I've never wanted to intentionally blade blade one of my shots. <laughs> but could but could you on purpose? That's I interesting. Have, I have to say that this is completely side note, but it's 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 been fun for me to toy around with the concept of how can the beginner hit six coal tops in a row? How can the beginner hit six coal tops in a row? Explain coal you know, tops. Well, you know, top, you know, hit the very top of the ball. You see kids and women and, and beginners all the time go to the range. They've never played golf and they top it over and over and over. Right. And beat themselves and so, up for it. And so if you flip that situation around and you say, okay, Fred, you're a good golfer. I need you to top six in a row. All of a sudden you would say, well, that's hard. It would be hard to top six in a row. Except this beginner just did that. So you <laughs> say, huh, <laughs> wow, this beginner must be good because he's doing a skill that would be difficult. So my, I flipped it around and I said, okay, if it's difficult, maybe their perception is off. Hmm. And I think we tell our students to look at the ball and the beginner looks at the top of the ball and that's where they hit. Looking so at the I, top of the ball. I tell my I tell my students all the time, don't look at the ball, because I don't look at the ball. I just look down. So you don't have a specific uh, point that you're a, a target abs- point. Absolutely not. I don't know anybody that does. That's a good player. They just look down and they hit the ball. I'm not looking at the ball. Is it about hitting I'm, the ball or hitting through the ball? Well, that's that's another equa- that's another question. So, <laughs> no, so when one. I when I when I tell my students don't look at the ball, look at the ground, they quit topping it. So usually you address the swing and you say, "Oh, you're lifting up." I'm I just think they're looking in the wrong place. Oh, so they're looking at the ball. So we, we told the we told them to look yeah. at the ball. They're looking at the top of the ball, and that's right where they're hitting. Yep, yep, I can they're, totally see it. They're being successful at what we told them to do. So I tell them to look at the ground and not the ball. They quit topping. Wow. Never even considered that. And it's, I, I totally get it. I and totally I just made it, it up. You know, I'm not, I got no science to back it up except for <laughs> hitting I'm, a having, balls. I'm, I'm having people not top it as often, you know, and we're talking beginners. Uh, anyway, that was a side note. No, it wasn't. That was like, nailed it. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, let's, okay. So you actually, without even trying, you've covered the, the, uh, five different, well, we didn't talk about the button well, shot. you know, so. yeah. And so, you know, how can you hit a soft pitch? Mm-hmm. So that's a different trajectory. Right. So, and in the sequence of movement, when I pivot for a low shot, the grip's going to be a little ahead of the club face and that D lofts. If, if I needed to hit a higher, softer shot, 
I would need the club head to catch up to the ball, maybe more even with the handle. And so I use the word release, and and the word release is very confusing because so many different aspects of what that means to different players. Mm -hmm. When I mean release, I simply mean the unhinging downward, like you were pushing the club head with your left thumb or your thumbs, just pushing the head down. Uh, I don't mean rolling over your arms. A lot of people think a release, they spin their forearms or they right. they spin their wrists. When I say release, I just mean the, the up and down hinge of the wrist. And I control loft if I unleash the club head and it gets caught up to the ball, even with the grip, it's going to have more loft than if I have my hands forward when that unhinges. And then if, if I, if I, so the sequence would be kind of, it would be a little bit different than the low shot because I need the head to release earlier than it did on the low shot. And then if I was in a bunker shot at that, that swing relative to sequence is I want the club head moving very fast and the grip not hardly moving at all. The grip almost stops at impact and it, and it's kind of a, it's like snapping a towel or a whip. I want the club head, which would feel very wristy to most people who, if they struggle in the bunker, most of the people I see are pulling the handle real fast. So the grip's moving fast and the head is lagging and they're leaning backwards in the bunker. If I can get them to release the head early, then the club face has more loft on it. When you said leading backwards in the bunker, are you seeing um, – are you- well, when, too much weight on the back foot as opposed to well, if a per, if a person pulls hard with their left side, their left shoulder is going to go up, the grip's going to go forward. Well, their head naturally is going to go back. back. And in the way that it was explained to me is your club head is most likely going to bottom out underneath the bottom of your neck. So wherever the base of your neck is relative to behind the ball, in front of the ball, right over the ball, that's pretty much where the club's going to hit the ground. Well, if you dive your head backwards because you pulled your left shoulder up, no wonder you hit it fat and thin because your club bottoms out way too soon. Mm -hmm. I think you watch really good bunker players get in there. They kind of lean their head left of the ball. They don't lean their head way back to the right. Mm Mm-hmm. And then the club head gets released not by pulling on the grip, but by throwing the club head toward the ball. I, I actually want the grip to to stop or slow down, we'll say, drastically around impact because I don't want the grip going fast. That's not the end I hit the hit the ball with. I want the club head going fast, not the grip. But but the you know the student that comes to me struggling in the bunker, they're always pulling on the handle. They're, they're not speeding the club head up. They're speeding the grip up. And so hitting the high shot out of the bunker or the flop shot around the green, that's a shot when you learn to do that, you learn to release the club head. And that's where, you know, my students say, wow, all of a sudden I'm swinging the club head fast with very little effort. Could I do that with my seven iron? And I'm like, well, if you want to hit it farther and easier and your back doesn't hurt as bad when you get done, that'd be okay. <laughs> How do you know my back hurt? <laughs> the person pulling on the handle is going to is going to stress his low back on the right side because they're always going to fall back. Right. Right. And and I, you know, I'm guilty. I've I've been there, done that. Yeah. Well, listen, I know that you have a lesson you've got to get to um and We've only covered one chapter of this book, so that is, that is a testimony to itself of – it's not a huge book, but it's a testimony of how much content is in here. And the chapter that we just discussed has six videos associated with that you can pull up on YouTube um, by using your smartphone app and just scanning it. So it will um, amplify this lesson with video. Um, Stan, it's awesome. Congratulations. It's called The Art of the Swing. Stan thanks so Thanks so much for having me on, Fred. Oh, it's great, and I hope that 
you'll come back without having a book to promote um, because it's wonderful to have you here. Again, uh, to get that reader, the free e-reader, to to pull up the videos, it's gettag.mobi, G-E-T-T-A-G dot M-O-B-I. And also Stan's website you should check out. It's Stan Utley, U-T-L-E-Y, Stan Utley.com. Stan, thanks again for coming to the Golf Smarter Podcast. Thank you, Fred. 